I'm Catherine Arnott Smith, and I'm an associate professor at UW's Information School, which is kind of that way down Bascom Hill. Uh, I realized this morning, I'm just astounded by this, I've actually been teaching online for 16 years. <laughs> and I thought, well, how did that happen? So it happened because I first got my feet wet distance teaching as a doctoral student at Pitt in the early 2000s, uh, which was Blackboard. And Blackboard at that <coughs> time, if anybody was doing anything with Blackboard, it was infamous at Pitt for having 100 required hours of training, which I definitely did not do. But there were people on campus who did it because I was only a TA and there was like a level of training I did not have to have. It was a lot of training. And so that received a lot of discussion, like why do you need all this training for this? Then as a junior faculty member at Syracuse University, I was, I realized later, very lucky to have a lot of online students. I taught a section of 40 in person and a section of 40 online of the same class every term for four years. Uh, perhaps out of reaction to this, I left and came here. Uh, and at Syracuse, I've been using WebCT. Here I got to learn, learn at UW. And so what I wanted, it was kind of interesting, they incentivized us heavily to try Canvas as instructors. And I was, as I understand it, somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but I was the only full, full term course 100% online in the spring pilot last year in Canvas. So everybody else was doing hybrid drop-in sort of things, but I was 100%. So this was one of my regular classes I've taught online somewhere for some years. I was very, very used to the class, but I actually wanted a new platform because it wasn't that I was sick of learning at UW, but I had had so much chopping and changing before between products that I had got sort of stale with learning at UW. And so the incentive totally helped. Incentives are great. Thank you, whoever worked that out. But it was also a feeling of, gosh, another platform. I'd like to do this. So my department has a fully online master's degree program. Uh, we, we have been doing online a long time, uh, collectively as well as individually. And uh, it was interesting to try Canvas. And I want to show you some slides to illustrate goods and bads, I guess. So one thing I really liked, this is Learn at UW discussion threads at the top level. So one thing I really liked was the way Canvas discussions display and I think feel. So this is Canvas discussions. It's kind of small. But you can see there's this Facebook-like feel to how discussions work. And I have to say, because we have an online program that lets face-to-face -face students in once the online seats are full, I actually, in every online class, I typically am meeting about a third of the students in my face-to-face -face class or just in the hall or something. And so I actually run into them, even though two-thirds of them are living in another state or even another country. Uh, and so I actually got feedback from the students that their feeling was the same as mine, that this felt very different. It felt like talking in a much wider space. It was actually a very nice feeling. And I don't have any data to back this up, but having taught this a lot and learned at UW and then once in Canvas, my strong sense was that people were talking more effectively in the discussions in Canvas because it felt freer. It, it just did. If I was to sit there and count the characters they input, I'm not sure that would tell me anything, but it just felt very, very different to me. So the students definitely like that too. So extra bonus answer is what I didn't like in Canvas. Um, and that was the analytics. Uh, that these are comparison shots. What you're seeing here is the top level, what I think of as the top level, the, the report on the entire class's activity. On the left, you're seeing what Learn at UW gives you for a week. I run my modules in weeks. So this is like one week of activity Learn at UW on the left, one week of activity Canvas on the right. And so what you're seeing here is this, this sort of cute, visually attractive Canvas dashboard, which I'm not going to argue it, it's totally visually attractive, but it actually doesn't tell you anything. <laughs> so that's um, the next slide. What I'm going to show you is the second level down, which is the level at which the instructor is viewing data relating to online behaviors of a specific student. So um, <coughs> I am one of those people who relies heavily on this data to do my grading. Understanding all the flaws, there's things I definitely don't grade for, but I actually use this behavior data to tell me if a student's really there or not, right? So 
this is what you get on the left is learn at UW, and on the right is the individual student profile. Um, so this is telling us that so-and-so visited week two's lecture twice, spent a total of 38 minutes. There's the timestamp of when they last visited. And then on the right is Canvas's version of the same thing. It's basically telling you where they went, what they did. So what's hard to make clear on the slide is the significant difference between these two course management systems, and this is my biggest thing I did not like about Canvas, is that it's not possible to download or export Canvas data. So the stuff on the right, you can look at it on your screen, and that's what you can do. <laughs> you can look at it on your screen. Uh, so this, next slide, <laughs> left and right, the left is the exported CSV or Excel spreadsheet data of what Learn at UW lets you do. It's basically showing what Learn at UW lets you export. And this is the entire class's online behavior. This was a class of about 25 students. So I actually compared the identical class a year later, right now this term, to what I got from Canvas last year. So typically in this class, I've got between 25 and 30 students. Uh, and it's, this particular one is all grad, although I do teach some classes where there's about a third undergrads and two thirds grads. Um, Canvas is collecting very similar data on students' online behavior, but it doesn't let me export or save the data in a way that I can do anything with it as an instructor, which I just find, frankly, so odd. <laughs> um, so my ability to use that data to actually inform my grading is actually pretty limited. So what I actually had to do last year was sort of sit there and manually inspect every student. And with only 25 students, I have to say that was about a half an hour a week. So in my program, usually there is no such thing as a TA because it's a graduate program. <laughs> you don't get TAs in graduate programs. So Usually the, it's the instructor only doing this. So of course my department's quite concerned about how Canvas rolled out because we're all gonna be in this position. I do however teach a summer online class um, which we have um, listed it for this upcoming summer at 275, 275 students with TAs. So that's 11 sections, one honors section which is mine, 10 sections led by TAs and it kind of boggles the mind, if I only had Canvas, I, I, I literally don't know what I would do. Because for, for 25 students, it was about a half an hour a week. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's something I found so puzzling, frankly, that last year I contacted Canvas Excellent Help Desk. And actually, they have great help, great support, great documentation online. All that stuff is there. So last year I called and spoke to several levels up in support to make sure I had this right because I kept thinking, oh, I've missed the button or the, the pull down or the, the plug in. There's something I'm missing because nobody in this day and age when we're all being asked to count everything we do would ignore this piece of the package. And actually last year they told me, yeah, there, there is no way to download or export. And so this year in preparation for this talk, I thought, well, I better be sure I got it right and didn't miss something. So I called them back and I got exactly the same answer on January 29th, which was yes, in that year, absolutely nothing has changed. There is no way to download, export, save the analytics from Canvas. And so the helpful help desk person said he suggested I make a request. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I did that last year. So um, that's where we're at with analytics. So. What happened with the course in general, of course students don't see the analytics, they just feel the effects of the analytics. So the students, I think, actually love this, this, um, this, uh, this package. Um, they, uh, they seem really to have liked Canvas a lot. Uh, I don't think they found it a very different experience, which I think was borne out in the survey that, um, who was it that ran that survey? Academic technology? Somebody ran a survey on how the pilot went that term. And what they found was not a whole lot of difference between the two. My students you know, mirrored that opinion to me when they, they said, well, you know, we like the discussion a lot. That's why I brought this out today because they focused on that. Uh, but they didn't see a huge difference between the two platforms. Um, so that's how they reacted. I heard very few negatives. I mean, it, it just doesn't seem to be a big deal to them. 
Um, what I would do next time, I think, is I would make sure there was a shared understanding between instructor, instructional designer, and ideally the CMS people on what analytics means. Because I've attended the, um, that great distance teaching conference at Monona Terrace a couple years. And last summer I went, and there was actually somebody fairly high up from Canvas in the audience of one of the talks. Uh, one of the bigger sessions, and she actually stood up and talked about how Canvas had all these great analytics. And I thought, what? <laughs> I mean, it was just one of these strange situations where you really want to know what they meant. And I think what they meant is that they want to sell it back to us. This is kind of what I've read online, that there was a plan to <coughs> sell it back to Unison Canvas users, uh, and that's why they were keeping it. Um, and that plan, what I read online, was that that plan had been scuttled because maybe enough people complained. But I actually have heard no updates on this ever since. Uh, so I think there, there's something of a, a disconnect if, if <coughs> this otherwise very nice CMS product purports to do analytics, but as an instructor, it isn't actually doing analytics. What's going on there? And so I think there maybe needed to be some more conversation about what analytics means and what an instructor would do. Now, there are a whole bunch of teaching situations where people could care less about the analytics. So I'm thinking of my students who go out and become academic librarians who do a lot of sort of one-off teaching that's designed to let students leave <coughs> the room with a certain set of skills, but that's it. It's not a term-long class. They, they wouldn't care about the analytics. All they need to know is that people showed up and did stuff. So, um, it totally depends on what you're doing, but I would say for a fully online master's degree distance program, we have to have workable analytics. So that's all I got. <laughs>